Apologies for the lateness of today's show. I'm a single dad of a couple teenagers and a toddler, and today I got pulled out of work due to the fact that school is closed for the observation of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. In fact, any day that I'm a little late getting this show up is usually one that's delayed in some way by doing dad stuff. Having said that, it's a pretty rare day that our newsfeed email newsletters late, which goes out by 7 a.m. Eastern Standard every Monday through Friday morning and Saturdays for our patron listeners and readers. If you're ever jonesing for your marijuana news, make sure you're subscribed to the newsfeed, which you can find over at mjtodaymedia.com slash newsfeed and which packs your inbox with the 50 or so relevant headlines that pop up in legal cannabis every day. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Monday, January 15th, 2018, and you're tuned in to episode 409 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story of the day brings us north to Canada, where Marijuana Business Daily's Matt Lamers is reporting buckets and buckets of marijuana investment dollars are pouring in. This is definitely a story that regular listeners should have picked up on over the last couple of weeks, as nearly $1 billion in fundraising deals have been announced in that time. According to Marijuana Business Daily's Math, the legal Canadian medical marijuana industry raised as much money in the first 10 days of 2018 as it did in the first seven months of last year. Swing over to Marijuana Business Daily's piece for a full list of all the most recent big deals. And again, pay attention to Canada. Medical marijuana patients in the state of Pennsylvania don't have to worry about their patient status interfering with their ability to purchase and own firearms after officials with the Department of Health announced on Friday that they would no longer be sharing their database of medical marijuana patients with state law enforcement agencies for use during background checks on gun buyers. Under federal law, it's still illegal for people who use any kind of marijuana to own guns, so this is one of those gray areas of the law that's still being worked out state by state. Our final top story of the day is a piece by my buddy Tom Angel over at Marijuana Moments about a letter sent on Friday by a bipartisan group of U.S. representatives to congressional leaders asking that states experimenting with marijuana legalization be freed from federal interference. The group of 69 lawmakers asked that an amendment be passed preventing the Department of Justice from spending money on marijuana prosecutions. The amendment was introduced by Representatives Tom McClintock, a Republican from California, and Jared Polis, a Democrat from Colorado. Specifically called out in the legislation for protection is each state with a legal marijuana law. Open up Tom's piece for more details and for a link to the full letter itself. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz it in headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, MJ Today Media, publishers of this podcast, our weekly show, Marijuana Today, and the ever popular MJ Today Media newsfeed email newsletter. We're holding today's spot to talk about the assistant editor that we need to hire. This very part-time job offsets its stupidly low wages with some great opportunities to learn more about legal marijuana media and the industry at large. Our assistant editor will help filter the day's news by scanning and parsing hundreds of headlines to find the ones that are relevant to legal cannabis insiders. If you know your way around the interwebs, have a good nose for news, and would like to throw your hat into the ring to become our next assistant editor, just send me an email to shay at mjtodaydaily.com, which is spelled S-H-E-A, shay at mjtodaydaily.com. Tom Angel picks up his second headline of the day with a story about a proposed piece of legislation introduced late last week into the U.S. House of Representatives that would, in effect, act as a super Rohrabacher FAR amendment. The annual budget rider that's provided a measure of protection to the medical marijuana industry over the last few years. The new piece of legislation introduced by California Congresswoman Barbara Lee and a handful of co-sponsors would prevent not only the Justice Department, but any other branch of the federal government from spending money prosecuting people for marijuana crimes, medical or otherwise. And unlike the Rohrbacher Farr Amendment, which has to be renewed every year, the new bill, if passed, would take permanent effect. 
this is certainly something we'll keep a sharp eye on. Alicia Wallace over the cannabis picked up on the story in Colorado of that state's U.S. attorney assuring his congressional representatives that his office did not intend to change its approach to prosecuting marijuana crimes in the wake of U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions rescinding the Cole memo. Colorado's U.S. Attorney Bob Troyer told seven members of his state's congressional delegation on Thursday that he would be keeping his focus on things like immigration, violent crimes, and the ongoing opioid crisis. An 11-year-old medical marijuana patient living in Illinois has earned the right to use medical marijuana in school after state and school officials gave her parents the go-ahead to do so while they figured out the details for a broader program. This is a great story to open up for the full read. On Friday, the police department of Worcester, Massachusetts, announced that they would not take part in any federal crackdowns on state legal marijuana businesses or participants. Worcester Police Spokesman Lt. Sean Murtha wrote in an email, quote, The Worcester Police Department will continue to enforce all state and local laws and will not get involved in enforcing federal laws in regard to marijuana. Unquote. And beautiful. U.S. Representative Earl Blumenauer of Colorado is not happy with an op-ed published on Friday by his state's U.S. attorney, Billy Williams, in which Mr. Williams sharply criticized Oregon's legal marijuana industry while announcing an upcoming summit to discuss the effects of legalization. In a statement released to Oregon's Statesman Journal, Representative Blumenauer wrote, in part, quote, I've talked to more members of Congress about this issue than anyone. No one thinks marijuana should be a Schedule 1 drug, and I think Congress might have more to say about that in the next year, and certainly after the next election. Unquote. Another good one to open up for the full dive in. Bouncing up to my corner of the country here in Maine, we have news of state lawmakers and a proposed advisory commission that would help work out ways to integrate the state's medical and adult use marijuana industries. The commission would be made up of 19 members drawn from law enforcement, the marijuana industry, health organizations, state regulators, and state lawmakers, and would submit a report and recommendations to the legislature once per year. State Senator Roger Katz, co-chair of the legislative committee that is currently working to implement adult use sales, says they have no intention of actually merging the medical and adult use industries, only that they wanted to find places where standardization made sense. Our final story of the day is the confirmation made by Vermont Republican Governor Phil Scott that he would indeed sign into law the proposed adult use legalization bill recently passed by his state's House and Senate. Governor Scott announced his intentions on Thursday, but did not say if he would be signing the bill into law publicly. Obviously, we'll be touching back on this one when he signs it. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, MJ Today Media, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.